And they've got some tough games in there. It's not easy. No, they've not by any means, yeah. Murphy. I think that'd be their biggest challenge, Murphy. Away. So they've got to go down to Plymouth Parkway on a Friday, which is not going to be easy for anybody. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's not guaranteed. But I thought Bracknell were going to trip them up, and they didn't. So, yeah, to be fair, that was quite close, wasn't it, until the final couple of seconds that game. And then Salisbury went for one away to Plymouth on Thursday. So. They've got nice big numbers, mate, haven't they? Should make spotting a bit easy. Might have to change that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're already about a minute in. Well, it should be all set to go in that. There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Borough Radio. The game's already kicked off here at the AI Stadium, where it's going to be Gosport taking on Hayes and Yedin. Gosport in yellow shooting from eye left to right, and vice versa for the Hayes and Yedin game. But it's still nil-nil here at the AI Stadium, and I'll run you through both sets of teams while the ball's currently being played around in the middle of the pitch. Uh, for Hayes and Yedin, it's Dylan a dying goal, two Cole Brown, four Aldi Elisi, five Marvel Ek Peter, nine Mohamed Betamer, 10 Luke Gabin, 11 Max Hudson, 12 Samuel Fannion, 4 Paul Field, 15 William Salmon, and 17 M. Snash Jr. And your gospel lineup today sees Toby Stewart starting goal, 2 Harry Kavanagh, 3 Rory Williams, 14 Jake Cope, 16 Zach Sharp, 6 Charlie Vasma, who returns, 7 Bradley Tarbuck, 19 Danny Hollins, 9 Dan Wooden, 10 Antonio Diaz, and 18 Rafa Ramos. And Jeremy, what are you expecting today from this clash? Looks as though Hayes and Yedden, they could be a good side today. Well, they're going to be fighting for their lives, James. That's the thing, because they're down at the wrong end of the table and they'll had a good result against Basingstoke just a couple of days back. So there's pros and cons. They should, they could be tired from that because they only played two days ago, but they'll be buoyed from the victory. And uh, when a team's fighting for its life at the bottom of the table, they're never easy games mm. and they're unpredictable games. Um, so we'll see. But this is not guaranteed by any means for Gospel Borough. Well, Jeremy, we did get promotion. Well, not promotion. We got the playoff spot last week against Tiverton Town in a 2-1 victory. And how good is that to be back in the playoffs after 10 years? It's incredible because the club's been sort of up, then down, and it's come back up again. Because the last... I, I remember the last playoffs, so I, was, I witnessed them all. And um, to live what we've lived through these past few years and then slowly rebuild and achieve this... It feels better this time as a result, I think. And to Gosport, they're currently on the attack. It's Bradley Tarbot trying to get the ball on the right-hand side of the corner flag, just having the tussle with Cole Brown, their number two. And Bradley Tarbot, he just brings the number two to the floor there, the right back, shoves him to the floor. He gets up pretty easily, Cole, and it's going to be a free kick and return. But yeah, like we said, Gosport, they have got playoffs now and that's a massive achievement for Gosport. We saw a lot of the management team talk about it, how impressed they were with the team. And it's this Pat and Joe revolution and it looks as though it can only get better now, this revolution. We've got a young squad and if we do get promotion this season, I can only imagine it's going to be the start, maybe push on from there and even get National League maybe. Uh, be careful what you wish for. I think as far as going up into the National League South is concerned, but the National League is a whole new ball game. But if they go up, it will be it will be nice to see the club reach that level again mm. after being relegated eight years ago. Um, however, I think it will be all change, all change next season. It, it's a very different landscape and they would need to invest some money in beefing the playoffs, the playing squad up a bit. But yeah, why not? It's good to dream, you know. Well, yeah, we've seen it once already. Oh, you would have been at Gosport at the time when they were playing in National League football. And I would imagine it was quite different from what we're seeing today. Yes, because um, there's a lot more professionalism in every team that you come up against uh, in terms of how they prepare off the pitch, the play, the players, the management, how, how they prepare. You will see a distinct difference at the next level. And you go to some very, very nice mm. grounds as well uh, that reflect mm. that. Um, so, yeah, it, I can only reiterate, it's a different world up there. Um, it was a shame to leave it, but we needed to. Oh. Well, it was Gabin there, just oh. on the attack. He was coming down this left-hand pocket, tried to deliver a cross. And in the end, it just dipped enough, hitting towards that court. Well, it hit towards the top. I think it did it hit the it hit crossbar. The wow. Well, it hit the apex yeah. of the yeah. goal on the outside of the post. So, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a wake-up call for gospel there. Well, as a result, Hayes and Yedin, they do now have a corner and it's going to be taken on the far side, just near the Harry Mitson stand. And it is going to be Fanny Ann taking the corner. 
And this is the first corner of the game for Hayes and Yedin. And it'd be interesting to see what they do. Got a couple of big players in the box. And it's hit towards that near post. Tried to be flicked back there by Nasher. Still not being properly dealt with by Gosport as it as it was Gavin there taking a shot. And it falls to number 15, just trying to get inside the, the Gosport box. But just a small little reflection there made it fall to Gosport's Antonio Diaz. As he tries to launch it forward, but it's been headed back into the danger zone by Nasher Jr., and now it's 10, Gammon, lifting a ball in. And it was a good touch there from number four, but the referee on the far side just lifting his flag and it's gone offside. Yeah, uh, Hayes, are just, it's a statement of intent, isn't it? They're not going to come here and roll over and um, they're going to give us a tough, tough time today. They need the points to stay up. And also, don't forget, I've said it and I'll say it again, Gosport cannot afford to be complacent in any way today. They've mm. achieved the playoffs, but you still got three regular league games to play. And we results from all of them. Well, yeah, exactly. Simple as that. Well, if we win every game, well, it's only going to add, well, it's going to add a lot of pressure. But it's Jake Cope, he's got delivered the ball. But once again, the offside flag goes up. But what I was trying to say there, if we do win every game, it's still not in our hands. As AFC Tottenham, if they win every game, they'll be the place, but the team is going to get that second place spot, aren't they? Well, the problem, not the problem we have, but what you need to think about is that Tottenham got the momentum with them. They had a resounding win against Everton last weekend beat Bracknell in a very tight game in the week. Um, and if they win all of their games that they have left to play, they will finish second. It is as simple as that. And unless they slip up, there's nothing we can do about it. So, but hey, you know, the playoffs, when you do get there, you'll find they are very, very strange creatures indeed. <laughs> strange things can and do happen. And the form book just goes straight out the window. Well, to be fair, I'm sure it's something every Gosport fan's looking forward to the playoffs. And it has been a goal kick taken from Hayes and Yellen. Dylan Adi, the goalkeeper for Hayes and goal today. And he's just 19 years old, currently on loan from Championship side Millwall. And a bit similar to Gosport's Toby Stewart in that aspect. A lot of young goalkeepers in this league and it's a perfect place to grow as a young player. Yes, absolutely, because it's a good standard of football and uh, and they learn and they learn fast. But uh, let's see what happens. And that's OK, so I'll just make the point. When... I was downstairs when the lad came out of the tunnel. He may be young, but he is physically big, imposing. So mm. he's got the makings of a really good goalkeeper, from what I understand about him. Well, it's currently gospel playing out from the back. A bit of ping balling going around in the centre of the park. But it's Rory Williams now coming forward down this left-hand channel, trying to pick a ball into Dan Wooden. Dan Wooden tries to lay it off into Rafa Ramos. But it's a good interception there from Brown. And it's gone all the way back to Charlie Vazma. The defender coming back from injury just played the one game in the last couple months. But it's good to see Charlie back in action today, especially when we've had that real lack of defensive force. Yeah, it's lovely to see him back out there. The only thing I regret is not having him partnered with Joe Morrison at the back. Mm. I think that would be the best defensive <laughs> partnership in the league. It would have been a nightmare. Honest, but hey, it's just good to have him back. Well, Rory Williams putting in the deep cross, nearly finding Tarbuck, and the cross trickles its way back to Kavanaugh near the right-hand corner flag. Still nil-nil here at the AI Stadium as Hollands delivers the box, trying to find Rafa Ramos. Oh. Looks as though Rafa Ramos, he might have got the smallest of touches, but a score now as it fizzles its way out for a goal kick and it was a good cross there from Kavanaugh and this is what we can expect from the fullback today a lot of good crosses from Kavanaugh and if you're a Hazen Yedden fan watching this stream well they need to be aware Kavanaugh's going to be that danger man delivering the crosses Harry can deliver some exquisite quality balls now he did there typical chance for Rafa he had to sort of twist his body a little bit to get the header in and uh, you're tweeting I can see that <laughs> but uh, it was a difficult chance but to be fair Kavanaugh can be an absolute architect when mm. when he's playing well. Now, referee's given a free kick here to Hayes and Yedding. Now, I know you're going to want to tweet here, <laughs> so I'll just help you out while you are doing that. Um, so, Hayes and Yedding will benefit from a free kick almost five yards, maybe ten inside their own half on the near side to us here is that in the main stand. Um, and Hayes aren't holding back. They've come here and they're going to be ambitious in their approach. This is Will Salmon with his sort of his man bun hair tied back who's going to launch this one forward right foot. It goes diagonally across to the left-hand side of the pitch. Toby Stewart comes and claims. That's a nice, easy catch for Toby there. Maybe the direct approach, not the way to go for Hayes, but uh, they've come here and they're playing very positive brand of attacking football, which is better, I think, than sitting back and inviting second-place team in the league to come at you. But uh, Ramos just losing out in a bit of a battle there with uh, Epiteta, who is an experienced player, 
counting Chelmsford, Sutton amongst his many former clubs. Well, a lot of these Hayes and the Eddins, they've all got bags of experience. And one of the players that I thought was most experienced today was their number 11 in Hudson. And I'm not sure if you've seen, but he's represented Malta a handful of times. He's had a lot of experience with the teams above, so the National League South, like one of the teams being Chelmsford. And a lot of these players also have that EFL experience, so they're captain as well. Odi Lusu. He, I think he was on loan with Rochdale, Coventry, so a lot of big teams. And this is a team full of that, well, first-hand experience from the leagues above. Yeah, and uh, it's, again, the Southern League's a good sort of uh, a good practice ground for the younger players, or you've dropped out the Football League and it's a good place just to find your form and try and attract a, a bid from a higher club. Well, it's that man Hudson on the attack at the moment, coming down this left-hand channel, skipping past Harry Kavanagh as he's still coming forward just by the left corner flag, 15 yards away from goal, still marching forward and still got him past Harry Kavanagh until it was last-ditch defending there from Danny Hollins, just sticking in his boot and making it go out for a corner ball. But it was good there from Hudson. Yeah, well played, Hayden Yedding. Coming forward, like I said a moment ago, they're playing some really good... Uh, positive attacking football and the worst thing, the very worst thing they could do is to sit back and let Goswell come at them. Well, it's going to be Cole Brown with the corner. Their first corner wasn't too successful, but what can they do with the second corner in this game? It's going to be floated towards the back, finding their number nine in Luke Gammon. But it's gone out for another corner, this time, this time on the other end. Uh, the first, that corner wasn't really that well dealt with. It looked as though Antonio Diaz, he had a chance to clear it there, but it did fizzle its way out for another corner. Maybe a bit disappointing, the defence from Gosport there. The corner was difficult, seemed to hang in the air for an age, and let's see what this one does. It's going to be the same man taken, Brown. And I have noticed there is a player coming towards him, but he does go for that lofted one in the middle of the park. It was headed away by Danny Hollins there, and it's gone towards the next corner flag. But rather than going be in the corner, it's a throw, and it's going to be that man, Hudson, taking it. Yeah, sorry to contradict. It was Rory who got his head on that. And for a, a, a guy who hasn't got a lot of height about him, he did not rise well there. And it was a crucial header because it just broke up that attack. And uh, Hayes, though, having a good little spell mm. here, James. And... Uh, they're just turning the screw on gospel and the home side really do need to concentrate at this point. Well, 13 minutes on the clock, still Gosport nil, Hayes and Yedden nil. And it's the away team who are probably looking the most dangerous going forward. But now Gosport coming forward. Santonio Diaz leading the attack, passing it into Dan Wooden in the centre circle. Now playing it out wide into Jake Cope. Can Jake Cope get on the end of this aerial ball? It looks as though he can, but he's tussling with Paul Field. Now Jake Cope back to Rory Williams, the Gosport skipper. He passes it into Antonio Diaz, around 25 yards out from goal. Dan Wooden, just outside of the D. And it's gone back to Antonio Diaz, despite their number four and their skipper putting a foot out. Now Tarbuck trying to play a through ball into Tarbuck, but it's been easily picked out by a die. And it's the Hazen Yedin man, O.D. Lucy, on the floor. The referee goes over towards him, and it just looked as though he tried to get in towards that sliding challenge. But after getting that sliding challenge, I think it was Rafa Ramos there, stuck out a boot to try and get on the ball. Yeah, no malicious, so. but I yeah. I think so. I didn't quite catch the whole of the incident, but... Uh... There's no malice in it, but um, clearly he's in some discomfort there. Um, a good time to summarise, though, with 13 minutes played, nil-nil. And I think just get a good time to summarise what we've seen in this open, almost quarter now. Now, I think that Gosport have been taken by surprise by mm. the way that Hayes have come at them, not been too negative, not been too cautious. In fact, no, we're attacking you mm. and Gosport. And I'll tell you what, in, in, I'd love to be a fly on the wall listening to those conversations down below. Joe and Pat taking the opportunity of the stoppage to drill some instructions yeah. into the players. and But for me, sitting up here, why would they do anything differently? They're, they're they need the points to stay up, Hayes and Yedding. Why come here and sit back and invite the team that's second in the league to come at you? Well, why, why don't you why just do go it? for it? Yeah, Other teams have tried it, but I think, and Gosport have at times struggled to break down the teams from the bottom reach of the table to come here and play that way. But I would much prefer, as a visiting manager, to set your team up to attack the hosts. Well, you would think so. And for me, I thought this Gosport lineup today was a bit of a surprise. So a lot of our star players weren't in the lineup today. So we've seen Corey Injuries. Jordan, he's not in, Alex Barca. Um, I'm trying to think of some other big players, but seeing the likes of Antonio Diaz, Zach Sharp, they're all getting their chance today. And maybe it's just the time where we can give these players some fresh legs and just get that further score depth before the playoffs start. I think it's nice that we have the depth to start with because um, Corey's injured. Um, didn't I think he sort of pulled up in the warm-up at Tiverton on Tuesday. 
Um, they're not risking him today. And we've got Charlie and Zach, who's the central defensive partnership. We know Morrison's out for the season. We know mm. Medway's out for the season. But you've, I think you've got a stronger team out as you can hope to have. And Diaz, I think, has started really well today. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. He's playing so well. Well, he plays that cam role, doesn't he? And I feel that cam role, it just fits perfectly in Gosport's lineup, where we need that player to connect with Dan Wooden and Danny Hollins as well. He's that middle man. Right. Well, let's have a look here because uh, I was going to say it. it's all he's stuff's been indicated there, James, but he doesn't look the happiest, this gentleman. Well, I saw the Lusu, the Hazen Yedden skipper, currently coming off. It does look as though he's going to be carrying on and coming back on. Well, he was the man we were mentioning a few minutes ago where he's had that bags of experience with the teams above. Had so much experience with Colchester, EFL. So he's a man to look forward to. And if he did have to come off early in this game, it's going to be a massive miss for Hazen Yedden. But I'll run you through some of the results as it's a Gosport goal kick from that injury. And some of the results in the Southern Premier League today see Swindon Supermarine. They're shockingly leading 2-0 against Basingstoke Town. So I think a lot of fans won't be expecting that. So, yeah... A 130 kickoff. Bracknell Town nil, Winchester nil. Didcot nil, Plymouth Parkway two. Dorchester nil, Hanwell nil. Uh, I may have to cut you off. As Gosport are currently on the attack. It's Rafa Ramos on the ball. I'll come back to the results in a minute. As Antonio Diaz is coming forward, passing it into Jake Cope down this left-hand channel. Copey coming forward. He's trying to escape Fanny Ann, but he's been dispossessed there. 20 yards out from goal. And now it gives Hazen Yedin a chance to roam free, but it's being intercepted by Danny Hollins as it goes out for throwing just near the Hazen Yedin dugout. And I'll carry on front some of the results here. Hungerford nil, AFC Totten nil, Murphy Town nil, Hendon nil, Murphy one, Beaconsfield nil, Salisbury nil, Harrow nil, Tiverton nil, Chesham nil, and Walton and Hersham nil, Shola nil. So not many goals today in the Southern Premier League. And I suppose the big game every fan will be looking forward to here is that Pompey game against Bolton. Yeah, so yeah. we'll try and get the results for you there. But how big that could be. Pompey could seal the promotion today. And it's a big day for Sporting with the Grand National taking place. So we'll keep you updated with that one, trying to see all the winners as well. Oh, it's 1-0. 1-0 Pompey. 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 Wow, yeah. that's massive. And, you know, it could be 1-0 Gospel here. It's Rafa Ramos. He's been fed a ball by a brilliant... It's brilliant keeping there from a die. And as you just heard, Jeremy, Pompey are leading 1 0 to Bolton. So it looks ever more likely Pompey could be getting their promotion sealed today. Early days, but yeah, it's the best possible start for them. And, and I'm really keeping everything across that they get it done. And they can just relax them for the last three games of the mm. season, knowing they're promoted and they're champions. And there's nothing all anyone can do about it. <laughs> well, so hopefully they still come down to our stadium next season. Yeah, but currently. Well, I think you heard there just how many people are in the stadium today. And it looks as though it's a really good well attendance here at the AI Stadium. I say it looks as though there's well over a thousand today. And it's just the things you love to see. Yeah, I think judging by the look of this, we have broken the thousand barrier again. By how much? Who knows? But when we won't know for the second half. But if we did, it would be the fifth time this season we've done that. So it would be amazing. Well, it's just extraordinary. And I can imagine it will only go up if we do get playoff football. But as Hudson, oh, yeah, could you honestly, imagine? Especially if it's Salisbury or the likes of ASC Totten. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, if we get a home semi-final here, it, well, you will see this ground absolutely mm. jam. <laughs> well, imagine we get the final here. Yeah, How well, good that could be. There, I mean, it's, like I said, playoffs to be celebrated. It keeps the season alive. But the form that goes straight out the window, they're tight games. They're never exciting. Mm. Or very rarely are they exciting it's just bucket load of tension yeah. and stress, but that's what it's about. <laughs> well, I think we can all look forward to it, and it yeah, was yeah, confirmed last week we will be getting playoffs. Hayes and Yedin, a team looking to avoid relegation, so it's a big team for both sides today. And Gosport, they have won a throw in around 20 yards out from goal. A lot of Gosport players now moving forward. It looks as though pretty much every player in yellows in the Hayes and Yedin half, other than obviously Toby Stewart. Oh no, it's their throw in, sorry. It's going to be Egg Peter taking the throw in. But still, it gives Gosport a good chance to put heavy pressure on here, maybe force an attack. And it's Danny Hollins who does win the header from that throne. The headers are just pinballing around the centre of the Hazen Yedden half before eventually Williams can get on the end of the pass. And now it's been playing around on the ball as Hazen Yedden is starting to come forward. The man on the, well, he was just on the floor moments ago, Odie Lucy. He passes it out wide. And now Hades and Yedin are coming down this right-hand channel. It's Brown leading the line, coming forward in the centre of the park, trying to get a ball across into Audi Lucy once again, but it's being cut out by Jake Cope. 
Now Gosport, it might give them a chance to roam and get an attack going. But it's going to start with Rory Williams. And Gosport, they still haven't had an attack yet within the first 20 minutes. It's still nil-nil, but it's not looking great for Gosport so far. Well, it's just, as I said, Hayes have come here and they're playing some good, positive attacking football. And Gosport are having to work hard just to keep them out. And mm. But it's a, it's a game of patience. Because if you play a high-tempo game like Hayes are playing, James, they are going to start tiring. So Gosport need to be patient and just look for the opportunities, and when they come, pick them off. Well, wow. Santonio Diaz, round 15 yards out from goal, passing it into Danny Hollins. Hollins might be teeing up a shot instead Ooh. of pass, and it finds Dan Wooden, but that's a great late challenge from Moore Zeal there. It's a sliding challenge as the defender went sliding in, getting the ball off of Dan Wooden, and passing it into his fellow defender in Williams. And that was brilliant last-ditch defending. It was indeed, and also Wooden found the ball sort of coming at him from a bit of a strange angle, and he had to try and correct his feet, and it just gave the defender that split second to get in there with a brilliant challenge now you've got to you can only give Hayes and Yen United great credit for the way they're attacking where they're defending they're positive I love it Holland's out wide into Tarbuck Tarbuck delivering across trying to find Van Wooden but once again it's good to defend him from Moore Cecil who headers it out there are appeals for handballs and the referee does blow for it it was Odia Lucy there with a the handball and as a result Gosport will be given a free kick 20 yards out from goal and this is a real menacing position for Gosport to have a crack at a free kick opportunity here yeah I think this is either going to be one for Rory or for Harry Cav um, but then Diaz is a wily old fox from set pieces and he's also lurking. So it'd be interesting to see what they come up with. And Williams is actually not partaking in this. And it does look as though it might be Antonio Diaz. Let's see. Well, I'm not sure if you remember that AFC Portchester game, but there's a lot of nostalgia involving those two, Harry Cavanaugh and Antonio Diaz. It was those two from the other end of the pitch, so where we're currently not watching. But basically, it was a free kick and they scored an absolute wonder goal. It was Harvey Rue who got the last finish. Yeah, I remember that. But could we see something similar here? It does look as though Antonio Diaz, he might be teeing up a shot. Yes. But Oh, he is teeing up a shot, but it's been drilled straight into the five-man Hayes and Eden Wall. It's falling back to Harry Kavanagh. This time, Kavanagh delivers across, trying to find Phasma, but it's trickled its way back into Hollins. Hollins puts in across, trying to find Sharp, but it's been headed out. Only as far as Stan Wooden, still in the danger zone. Out wide into Harry Kavanagh, 20 yards out from goal. Kavanagh passing it into Hollins in the centre of the park. Back out wide into Danny Hollins, this time in the left-hand side of the pitch. Back to Williams. Williams might be trying to put a ball back into the danger zone, but it's just too heavy hit the cross and it's not going to find Van Wooden and it goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, that, the cross was over here and it was a bit ambitious, but never mind. You know, Gosport's starting to play their own football now. They've sort of had to defend for 22 minutes because that's where we are now. Um, they've had to defend for about 20 mm, of them. So, yes. um, but like I said, pick them off. Just stay patient, stay tight, because if you're playing, as I said, I'll reiterate, if you are playing a high-tempo game of football like Hayes are, you will start to tire as a team. And that's when Gosport need to strike if not before. Well, the stats say us it shouldn't be the story the way the story is currently going within this game. Hayes and Yedin, they've only picked out five from a possible 15 points, including one win, two draws and three losses. Only three goals in their last five. So what do you put this attacking threat down to? Do you think it is just this confidence. pure desperateness? No, confidence because they beat Basingstoke in the week. That was a big win for them. Mm. Um, they've got confidence and they're coming here today and they think, well, look, what have we got to lose? We need to stay up. We need points to stay up. However, nobody expects us to go to Gosport and get something. So, what the hell? Well, yeah, they did pick up an impressive 1-0 victory. And that could ultimately be the difference. Those three points that do keep them up. But we have to see if they can find another victory here. As it's 25 minutes played. Still Gosport nil, Hayes and Yedin nil. And it's Toby Stewart with a goal kick trying to find Rafa Ramos. And it's a good touch from the Portuguese as he is brought down to the floor by Brown there. The referee immediately blows up and signifies for a foul. And it does look as though it's going to be taken quick by Bradley Tarbuck. Nope, it's not. It's going to be Antonio Diaz. But... Yeah, it was a clear foul there. And once again, it's given Gosport a good chance to maybe get an attack. And also, just before the free kick is taken, I just want to touch on another point about Hayes. They've now got a very uh, acute, astute, experienced manager in Andy mm, Lease. Yeah. Um, been there, done it, knows his stuff. Well, before they had Mark, no, not, yeah, Mark Mosley, wasn't it? The former Gosport manager. Say no more. <laughs> a lot of Gosport fans don't have too many fond memories of him. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's at Weymouth now. I think many fans were quite shocked about that. But it's Charlie Fasma. He did try and 
drew a ball in, trying to find Rafa Ramos, but it was cut out by Brown. Still got spot on the attack, thanks to Antonio Diaz winning the ball back immediately. Now Holland's trying to deliver a ball, trying to find Wooden, but he's unsuccessful in doing that. And now it's Audi Lucy, just outside of the D, trying to thread a ball into Nasher. But it's been immediately cut out by Jake Cope in the centre of the park, passing it back into Williams. And for you, bringing in this manager, Jeremy, it must like signal quite a bit of hope. Because I was watching his first press conference and his first interview, and the manager did say he was hopeful of keeping Hayes and Yedden up. And he, yeah. still, he does still see that hope and glimmer within this Hayes and Yedden team. Have a look at how tight it is at the bottom of the table. It, I think it's four, four, three points separating about mm. five clubs. And they're just above the drop zone at the moment. So, yeah, why not? Of course it's achievable. And he's just the right choice. He's experienced. He's managed at a higher level. And, yeah, he's, he can do it. And the, if you look... Where is he? What's he given? Just seeing what the referee's given here, James. Goal kick. But, yeah, I mean, he's, he's basically putting them in a positive frame of mind. Well, I think that's the purpose of the manager, really, just like to try and get that, mo well, heavy motivation across. And it's something Mark Mosley, for me, didn't do with this Hayes and Yedden side, especially. And I don't think he really succeeded with that with Gospel. But this manager, he's best known for his time at Cheshire. Correct. Well, he got playoffs several times. He got one promotion with them. Right. And he does have that success in him. So maybe he could take Hayes and Yedden back to the top. And maybe deliver that promotion for them. Because ultimately, First, that is going to be the end goal. Well, it was only a couple of years ago that Hayes and Yedden lost the playoff final mm. to Farnborough. And that was as tight as it gets. And they're a big club up there. You know, they've got a, they've got a huge, a brand new ground almost. And a good setup. It just needs that missing something. And I've been a surprise to anybody, as anybody, to see them down the road yeah. in this year. Well, I think it was a lot of shock. And I was watching some of the predictions for the game. Well, some of the predictions for this league. A lot of the predictions suggested Gosport were going to be finishing 13th. So, Gosport, they've definitely delivered quite highly. And I believe they put Chesham down to finish near the bottom side of the table, well, which is just remarkable really considering what they did. Chesham have run away with it, but... Uh, to be fair, the renaissance here at Gosport has been remarkable this season, but it's been lovely to see it mm. and to experience it and live it. And to get into the playoffs is a fantastic achievement. Make no mistake, when a year ago we were in Hayes situation, fighting for our lives, and we didn't manage to get survival to about two games yeah. to go. So there you are. Well, Hayes and Yedden, they will be looking for that win. And they have started out the better side in the first half an hour. But it is Gosport currently on the attack, still nil-nil. And it's a poor pass from the Gosport defender, Zach Sharp, as he does try and find a free ball into Dan Wooden. But it just goes all the way out for a goal kick on the far side from where I'm watching. And it's going to be a D taking a goal kick. But yeah, I'm surprised. Like I said, for the new viewers tuning in, Gosport, they really haven't started well in this game for me. Well, it's just that they've had to deal with Hayes and Yedding's positivity and they've come here with a clear game plan and Gosport have had to do with the lion's share of the defending here. Um, Jake Pope penalised there for a foul. But they have started to play their football. But we know, don't we, that Gosport very notoriously are a second, <laughs> second half, half side. Well, that's what we've been nicknamed of recent times, second half FC. And it seems to say that's the way Pat and Jerry like to play. But a free kick has been taken. It was Jake Brown with a free kick, passing it out back from the back. And now Hayes and Yedden, they're going to be looking for that counter-attack. They have had a shot so far, just the one. And it did hit the post, that apex between the post and the crossbar. Unlucky not to go in. It was Hudson with the ball. And it's Hayes and Yedden currently on the attack once again. It was 10 coming down that right-hand channel, but losing the ball. And it just goes out for a throw-in. Brad Tarbuck's awfully frustrated out there, remonstrating with Danny Holland. He's not quite sure mm. why, but uh, Gosford cannot allow frustration to creep into their game. Cool heads, people. Cool heads. Well, it's William passing it into Antonio Diaz, and now immediately passes it into Tarbuck. Tarbuck striding forward down the centre of the park. A team up is sure, and what was that from the former Haven man? It looked as though that shot, he had opportunity there. He was in acres of space, went for the shot rather than looking for that extra pass and just placed one over the Hayes and Edinburgh. I think he was fired up because only a minute and literally a second ago I said how fired he was up. How fired up he was, sorry. Um, and having a debate with his teammate, Danny Hollands. And then he got charging forward, doesn't he? Now, I think, yeah, he had options centre, left, right. I think Wooden on the right was the best place. But yeah, have a pop. Looks great if it goes in. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But yeah, better options perhaps. Yeah. So you're tweeting. So I'm just going to keep the commentary going whilst um, you're tweeting. But yeah, we have uh, Hayes and the Edding United player down. 
Same as before the captain. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's um, Od Odalusi who's down. That this might be the end for him now. Um, the physio's looking, two of them out there working on him, looking quite concerned. Let's see if we get the substitution signal to the bench. But we have a stoppage here with half an hour on the clock. Gosport nil, Hayes and Yenny United nil here at the AI. Um, so let's see what happens to him. Is he going to be okay or is it the end of the road? I don't see a signal being related to the bench. So perhaps... He's going to try and soldier on, James. Well, like I said, he's got bags of experience there, Captain. A lot of experience with the likes of Colchester, League 2 experience. And it will be a big miss if he does have to go off, well, within the first half an hour. Well, he's got a heavy limp. Look I was going to say, think, surely he can't carry on. Well, I still haven't seen the signal to the bench that he needs to be replaced. So is he now going to try and run this off? Um, I'm watching with one eye on any activity with a substitution, but... Doesn't appear to be, so I think no. he's going to try and soldier on. Well, it does look as though. And an interesting fact about that skipper is, well, it's definitely going to show resilience, this story. He did go into retirement in 2019. So he was meant to have retired five years ago, <laughs> but he has come back into action. I believe it was with a step set, yeah, step seven side, but eventually he worked his way back up to Hayes and Yedden in step three of non league football. And it just shows real resilience. And I would imagine he's going to be showing the same resilience when trying to come back onto the pitch. Yeah, he sat down just in front of the away dugout here just below us. Um, they're, they're getting him off the pitch. Paul, my DJ's observed that his, his boots off. So Hayes and Yedden currently playing with 10 men while they assess him. Now, the substitutes are warming up somewhere. They were. Um, but I think he's going to try again. <laughs> well, third time's the charm, as they say. He's already gone... What He's gone. He's come off once this afternoon, so this will be the second time he re-enters the pitch. But at the moment, the game is still carrying on, as it is a frame for Hayes and Yedden on the far side near that Harry Mitson stand. It's been cut up by Harry Kavanagh, and it's gone all the way into Antonio Diaz. Still 10 yards inside the Gosport half, trying to find Rafa Ramos, but it's been dispossessed by Ek Peter on the left-hand channel. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny, because um, the Ek Pateta family are a bit of a football dynasty. I think there's three or mm. four brothers, and... They are all well known in and around the London area, and uh, they all play at a high level. So, yeah, a little bit of a footballing yeah. <laughs> dynasty, the Expoteta family. So, yeah. Well, it's a bit like the Masons with Sholin. They've yes, got four yes, or five yes, brothers. Yes. And I remember seeing a Budweiser advert where they all featured. It's a great advert, so I'd recommend watching that. Famously. Yeah. <laughs> But they did lead to a lot of success with Sholin. Uh, but I'm going to cut myself off. As Gosport, they were just on the attack there. Zach Sharp trying to pass the ball into Kavanaugh. And acres of space, but just took a bit too long there. They passed it back to Rory Williams coming down the left-hand channel. Back into Jake Cope as he passes it into Diaz. One-two between the two midfielders. And that's really poor from Bradley Tarbar. Trying to backheel it into Danny Hollins. But it's been immediately dispossessed there from Mohamed oh. Betema. And now it gives Egg Peter a chance to launch it forward. Only as far as Harry Kavanagh, 10, 10 yards inside his own half. And it's Nasher in the left-hand channel, passing it into Hudson, the Malta 